HP Dragonfly, a new, so uh, first of all, HP has a lot of different sub brands and Dragonfly is this super light, uh, very portable, typically comes with uh, LTE or, or 5G. It's the pinnacle of experience for, for HP. And what the company did is they uh, made an announcement at CES that they partnered with AMD to do a, um, a custom implementation. And I'm very cautious not to use the word custom chip, but what I would say is it's a custom technology. I do think that they, uh, inside of TSMC, uh, AMD made some, uh, you know, change some knobs either in in binning, either to benefit performance or uh, raw performance or battery life. But I think the more important thing were the optimizations that was done between the two company on on firmware. Okay, uh, this was a big deal as you as you may know if you were at CES. Lisa had the V opening keynote, uh, and you had uh, HP CEO actually get get on stage. I think that's a a pretty big uh, deal. We also saw Panos get up there and in a way, uh, you know, say that, you know, from a Windows perspective and its its support for AI, it was a, a good bet. Um, I got the the chance uh, at 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 uh, at CES to kind of uh, dig in on this and what um, with with Alex Cho, we've had him on the the six five before. And he talked about something that I, I didn't know at the time, which was this platform has a multitude of sensors. I think he said it had over 50 sensors and I didn't get all the details out of him. I'm going to be patient and, and wait for it. But uh, a lot of these sensors, um, they improve the experience for the user and improve the experience for the OEM or the service provider in as a service environments. You know, I've been harping a lot, uh, Daniel, about uh, the reason that, you know, I think one reason that the as a service hasn't taken off in the PC industry is because they're the same devices. Uh, when the hyperscalers did as, as a service, IaaS, PaaS, or SaaS, they fundamentally changed infrastructure. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't show up with, uh, you know, the old enterprise gear, they completely redid it. So um, I am looking uh, to anticipation to see how these sensors will leverage uh, as a service uh, for for the company. Like, you know, what is that actually tracking uh, to, to, to send back to the mothership or send back to the enterprise to be uh, uh, to be to, to be to be to be aggregated. But uh, check out uh, the Forbes article that uh, I did along with uh, Jacob, and hopefully uh, you will be as impressed uh, as I am. Yeah, I didn't have the benefit to uh, test this thing, so I'm, I'm kind of going off of your take here, and I look forward to maybe having a chance to play, if anybody out there that can help that happen. Oh, by the way, I found out who LinkedIn user is. Should I announce it publicly? Yes, yes. So LinkedIn user is our dear friend, Brian Madden from AMD. But for hey. reason, he's just shown up. I got a message in my, like, uh, an LOL. <laughs> showing up. So, hey, Brian, thanks for uh, chiming in and joining the show. I'm, you came in just in time. Did you know we were going to talk about AMD? I don't think you knew that. But, by the uh, way, uh, Brian, it was fun staying out till uh, 1 o'clock in the morning with you at uh, in uh, in Vegas. That was fun. I can't my liver, my, my liver, liver didn't, doesn't like you, but uh, um, Pat, the, the other Pat does. We'll put um, we'll put some photos in the show notes from that night. Um, not going to happen. Anyways, uh, so I'm not going to add a lot here. What I'm going to say is that you know you asked an interesting question in your in your piece, and you said my question for HP is why take the chance with AMD? Um, provocative, right? And I thought it was a, a thoughtful statement, but you know, look we are seeing a, a, a movement towards more diversity of SKUs, uh, the utilization of, of AMD's technology by many of the OEMs as they're looking to, A, take advantage of uh, AMD's uh, progress and, and, and their successful innovation that they've been able to show across silicon, both in the data center and in the PC space. 
Of course, uh, availability um, has been a thing throughout the pandemic as well, which drove more companies to diversify their SKUs. But AMD is doing a lot of very exciting and innovation, innovative stuff in their PC, a lot of the AI on chip. I'm, I'm encouraged by what they're doing, and I think that's why companies in, like HP have made bigger bets and gone more aggressively. Um, the challenges of Intel are well-documented, so I don't think we really need to talk about that here, but we can say sometimes that one company's challenge doesn't necessarily mean another company shouldn't be recognized for their success and their innovation. So I think it's more of an um, of, of a in indication of AMD's success in driving innovative products than anything to do with Intel. And of course, the success of a product like this will be the final arbiter of truth as to just how good both A, the technology is, and B, the marketing is. Good cover. I don't remember uh, saying the risk, but maybe I did. I'll have to go back. Actually, to uh, the it. line item is, my question for HP is, why take a chance with AMD when Intel is already building out? So I'm just reading out of your thing. So, you know, you write uh, about everything. Oh, that was Jacob, not me. No, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I try to be a little bit provocative in uh, in these articles, but uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, if HP does, uh, you know, leans more into AMD in lieu of Qualcomm. Uh, coming up, that's an interesting Ooh, thing. I mean, yeah. hot, hot, hot. Hold on. Yeah, no, it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, we we will have to see.